Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me today. I'll give you a quick overview of the Comsol Multiphysics product and demonstrate setting up and computing a model. Comsol Multiphysics is a software platform through which you can model real-world designs and processes in a virtual environment, and you'll also have the option to work directly with your own customized equations. In the Comsol Multiphysics core package, we have the model builder, where we set up, build, and compute a model. Then we have the application builder, which enables you to quickly turn a model that you've built into a simulation app. This is done by packaging your physics model into a specialized, easy-to-use interface. After developing your simulation app, you can make it accessible to colleagues or customers. With Comsol Compiler, you can convert your simulation app into a standalone executable file. With Comsol Server, you can share and manage access to your simulation apps, all through a centralized platform. Here we have the entire Comsol software products. There are several add-on products that can be combined with Comsol Multiphysics that enable you to simulate specific physics phenomena across a wide range of application areas, and any of these can be coupled to one another to simulate multiphysics which is important because the real world is a multi-physics world. So when you purchase the software, you get the core product, and then from there, you can select modules specifically tailored to your physics. And each module comes with specialized physics interfaces and boundary conditions. Additionally, we have several multi-purpose modules, as well as interfacing modules that enable you to interface with an external software, such as a CAD program. In our demonstration, we will be modeling a permanent magnet synchronous motor. Specifically, our interest will be in the areas of torque and cogging. Let's look at how we can build such a model. First, we will select rotating machinery under electromagnetics and mechanics. And we will start with a stationary study for initializing the magnets. Here, we can start drawing the object, we can import it if it was designed externally. I will use the part library. The part library contains a range of objects that can be used in your model. A part is essentially a model that contains only a parametric geometry, and we'll import from the folder called Three Phase Brushless PM Motors Geometry Parts, the external slot at the stator. So here we can see the geometry, and it contains a number of parameters. We want a nine slot machine. And since this is a three-phase machine, the number of slots is three times the sectors. So we will change the number of sectors to three. Now we can see that the teeth at the stator are not large enough. So we will make this wider and fine tune other parameters. Now we have our electric motor. So we return to the part library and import a surface mounted magnet rotor. We will want to have six poles and since they come in pairs, we will set this to three. Selections is a very important concept and we will keep the automatically created ones except we don't need a selection for the gap. We have a number of phases, and in this case, we also need the return phases. We also select the stator core. And that's it. Before adding materials, we will add a few more things. The first is a cylindrical coordinate system, as the magnets are magnetized radially. We will also generate a union selection to combine similar objects. Even though these will be magnetized in different directions, they are made of the same material. Similarly, the static core and the rotor core are made of the same iron with the same saturation curve. So now we can start adding materials. There are a number of material libraries. From the Comsol Multiphysics core package, we will take air and iron materials We will use the iron material for the shaft. 
the air will be automatically applied to the rest. Now, let's move over to the magnets materials. We will start with the basic soft iron core without losses. And then I will also load one of these neodymium ferroboron. We associate the selection in magnets with the magnet, and we also make a selection for the soft iron core. The software doesn't know yet which constitutive relationship to use for the different materials. To define this, we start by duplicating the physics model for Ampere's law. We assign this to the magnets and select the remnant flux constitutive relationship. So we have the magnets and here we can use the cylindrical coordinate system and say that the ones that are magnetized in the inward direction should have a magnetization of negative one in the radial direction. Here I can duplicate it, point it to the outer magnet, and that's it. Recall here, we use the remnant flux. Similarly, we need a BH curve in the nonlinear iron. And we see that the soft iron core now uses the information from the nonlinear iron. And now the materials are essentially set. We can also put some meaningful length in the perpendicular direction. And now we can start setting the rotation of the object. So we can set that we have a rotating domain. We want the magnet and all its parts to rotate. We will define the rotation, which will be imported as a variable. So here we have the expression for the rotation, but it is missing some information. For example, what is omega? It is defined by another file for the parameters. In the parameter file, we have the peak current in the coils, the angular velocity for the rotation, which is 1000 RPM, and the filling factor of the coils, and so on. All the quantities are defined. Next, we need to set the continuity between interior and exterior parts. Once this is in place, we want to do two more things. First, we will add the coils and we will say that the A phase will carry a current, IA, that was imported along with the rotation variable. And this is not a single conductor, but is a homogenized multi-turn coil that goes in two different directions. So we will now load the reverse current. So we choose A minus. And we can see that in a few clicks, we can define all the coils, which will be automatically parameterized. Okay, we now duplicate this twice. and then say that I would like to have the section B with the current IB and the return to be B minus. And similarly for C. I forgot we will also need to set the resistance. Okay, this is essentially everything we need, but we will also add this force calculation feature, which is really a post-processing feature. It automatically creates a torque variable. And before solving, we will add a time-dependent solver. We will use the variable t tot. Let's say we would like to have about 120 time steps and perform a few steps to make the model solve a bit faster. Now the simulation is running. 
what we see is the magnetic fields at the final time step. We also have all the solutions for the previous time steps, and we can see the object is rotating along with the fields. We could now add a number of different plots. I don't want to go into details here, but here we can see the magnetic flux density in the point. This is the field in one specific direction, and we see that the field is oscillating. There will also be hysteresis losses. This gives losses that we can compute. And we can also compute things like the torque. Here, we select the axial torque, which is the torque of the machine, and it's around 2.6, but there is some cogging. We could also generate the concatenated flux. Another thing we can do is to add another study. We could also, of course, sweep over the geometry quantity, but here we will sweep over the input current. The peak current was 0 0.2. We will run the same study as before, but for three different values. This is the basis for generating efficiency maps. We don't need to run through three cycles, we just look at one. First, it solves the stationary study, and then the transient. For the parameter study, we can take the average of the torque. Let's try estimating the cogging. We can see from looking at the standard deviation that it is increasing. This is the foundation for any mechanical analysis.